Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the ACE Performance Training Podcast. This is episode nine with very special guest, Felicia O. Oh, how are you this morning? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Talk with me. Um, so Felicia is a jiu-jitsu black belt under John Jacques Machado, one of the female dirty dozen. And I just kind of wanted to find out about your journey um, in martial arts. I mean, you're definitely one of the people I've always looked up to. And uh, it would just be really cool to kind of learn your story. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's kind of like, like from the beginning, you know, like kind of what initially sparked your interest into martial well, arts? Yeah, it's interesting because you're up on a mountain living in, in, in nature. Um, in 2000, uh, sorry, 1999, there was this, some of you guys are young, so you don't remember, but there was this big thing called the Y2K scare. And they thought all the computers, everything was going to break down because the computers didn't know how to deal with the number 2000 after the 1990 whatever's, right? Yes. Yes. I remember. So um, <laughs> some, of your viewers, some of your viewers might be younger. Yes. Um, and so, you know, everyone was like, oh, Y2K. And, 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 just something in my brain was like, you know what? I, I haven't done anything where I've had a medal or something like that. Like that was kind of interesting that, and I wanted to do something that could co kind of commemorate that year. Like 20, uh, I want to say 2020, but it's like, that's 20 years ago. Uh, 2000. <laughs> so, um, partway through the year, uh, some friends of mine in 1990, end of 90, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it was the end of, it was in 99. Yeah. Um, we're starting to train for the, the marathon, the LA marathon. And so I started doing that and I thought, okay, well, I'll do the marathon and get this medal. And I think, I think maybe it was like October, November of 99 that we started training. Right. Okay. And then, so then we did the marathon and it was like, kind of like the, the worst marathon in history ever, um, with weather, uh, it was pouring rain for the first half. And then well, my first half, I mean, Jeez. other people were already done by that point, but, um, <laughs> So yeah, it was pouring rain and it just turned into a really long ordeal. Yes. And, and so I, I did that. And then later um, that year in end of October, um, my friends were going on a hiking trip to Mount Whitney and, you know, you have to buy, get um, passes ahead of time. Yes. And they had, it, it was a couple and I used to rock climb with the wife and with Anne Marie and and then they had a, a friend and their son, his son, that were going to go with them. And something happened to the son and they couldn't go. So they were like, well, we have two extra spots. Do you want to go? You're the only person that we know that's kind of in good enough shape that could go. I was yes. like, OK. So um, so a couple of weeks later, we went on this horrible trip. And again, weather came in and made it a nightmare. So there was a big storm that came in. And um, I thought we, we thought we were going to die up there. Uh, it, it was bad. You know, the storm came in and we were just like uh, oxygen deprived in a tent where the yes um the guides didn't really uh help help us or inform us on what to do so okay. so that became kind of uh the second outdoor nightmare and my friend's husband who i had only met like once or twice before was telling me about this martial art called brazilian jiu-jitsu on the way up to the hike and uh, I didn't think much of it. I was like, okay, whatever. We get up to the motel. He starts showing me the positions on the bed. And I was like, oh, this is a little weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and she's just standing there like laughing, like, uh, like not interesting. Right. And I was yeah. like, oh, a little weird. So on the way back down, I, I, I was thinking, you know, this outdoor kind of thing. Cause I mean, I grew up in, the, in, in Seattle, but I wasn't a big outdoor person. Like I didn't do a lot of the outdoor stuff. Yeah. So um, I thought, well, maybe the outdoor thing is maybe not my thing. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After that. <laughs> Although I was like, 30, you know, in my thirties at the time. So I, I, on the way down, I said, you know, what's that martial art you're talking about? Like, I think I want to try that. Okay. The next week I went to class and I, I watched a class and, and at that time there was a beginning class and a regular class. So I watched a regular class and then um, then the next day I went to the beginning class and my friend, he was a blue belt at the time and he was mind you 58 at the time. And okay. I was, um, 33. So, uh, he stayed for the beginning class for the first day and was my partner. And then I felt a little more comfortable and then I never saw him again. <laughs> <was> like, That's <laughs> it. <laughs> but then, you know, I had a great group of guys that was in that beginning class with me and kind of, um, took me in as their sister and kind of helped me and, and became friends. And, um, you know, people, 
to ask a lot like what was it like back then and there weren't really a lot of women and what was yeah. that environment like and for me like that beginning class definitely was helpful because the, the regular class was like vicious like yeah. i was terrified to go to that beginning class i had anxiety go i mean i had anxiety going to the beginning class i was yeah. terrified to go to the regular class no <laughs> and it, it it was it was like being um, a, a little freshman, you know, in high school, like from a little tiny school going to this giant, high, you know, public high school, and, and you're kind of like, oh, all these upperclassmen are really scary. I mean, that's kind of the the, the feeling it, it was for me. And, um, you know, I, I get people asking me about, you know, anxiety. Um, sure, I had anxiety all the time going in, but yeah, I just didn't let it stop me, you know? Yes. Um, I, I know probably in a lot of those classes until I got more comfortable, actually for a long time, while they were teaching the technique, I was thinking about who would be my partner and who would who would be open to being my partner in this group of guys. Um, and um, so e even some of those guys that were, you know, that embraced my being there were not necessarily great partners for me because they were like 200 pounds or something. Yes. Right? Yes. So, so I was always thinking about, okay, now how do I like get closer to that person? So when it becomes time to start that, that doing I the technique, I'm, I'm, you're, you're my partner, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there, I, I definitely um, have a lot of anxiety in general, like a lot of people, you know, but you yeah. learn to deal with it and it, it just, you just have to put it aside. I mean, that's the same thing yes. that happens when we compete. That's the same thing when we have to speak or when we have to do a podcast or anything. Yeah, I know, right? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I think everybody has these things and then it's like you either use them or you let them paralyze you, yes. right? So um, you, you just take a breath and you just go do it and yeah. don't think about it. So so I didn't really think about the fact that I was the only woman there, you know, like to me, I came from pretty male dominated industry. So like I worked in computers before. So, okay. And growing up, I was always just very uh, verbal and men, you know, talk, talk about yes. and, and so I was kind of prone to, to that. And yeah, that makes so sense. Comfortable, you know, like it wasn't awkward, but I think it's also how you come into the situation, whether it's your job or jujitsu it's like it's how you present yourself and how you come into the room yeah right so if if you um are being treated a certain way it might have something to do with how you're presenting yourself and being to others as well yes right? yes um so uh I, I didn't really have any issues um in terms of being harassed yeah, at, at all. Um, I think people were quite respectful. And it's interesting, years later, a, a lot of guys who were there before me and may not have been that close or communicated to me, like years later now, and we're in a very different environment where it's much more welcoming to people, yes. you know, they were just like, wow, like you put up with so much crap. And, and, and they're just so much more respectful to me now. Right. Where and it's a little funny because I was like the little white belt, like everybody starts as a white belt. Yes. And, and now I'm still here. And um, you know, a lot of people don't stay. Yes. And so just by showing up and not quitting, you know, there's a lot of respect given to that. And I have oh, yes. a lot of respect for a lot of my training partners or people that I saw come in maybe after me. And I you know, maybe they weren't the most, um, the fastest learners or the most talented people, but I've also changed, you know, when I see them and they have gotten their black belts and persevered for, you know, years and maybe they didn't have competition success. Maybe they didn't compete at all. Maybe they didn't get some of that positive feedback coming back to them, but yet they still show up every day and they still train every day. And so now I have a lot more respect for that. Yes. Which is pretty amazing, you know? Yeah. It takes a lot of grit. I feel like to continue, Yeah, yeah. you know, especially cause you, you know, we get injured and stuff, you know, and it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that normally is when people start quitting, right. They keep getting hurt. And they're yeah. like, they have other jobs or other priorities or other things. And they're just like, I can't, 
but you know. And it's tricky. I think you, you can know, find I, a balance if it's if it matters to you, right? Yeah, and and you know, I I even would tell my students when I was teaching. You know, I don't expect you to make jujitsu your life. I expect jujitsu to be part of your life, right? So you yes. don't have to do it the way I do it, right? Like you don't have to feel bad because you don't live at the gym or you don't come to class every class or whatever it is. You know, if it's twice a week, it's twice a week. I want people to have jujitsu as a part of their life. Yes. It it, for me, it became my life, right? Yes. Be everyone's life. Everyone isn't the same, right? It, exactly. It's, that, that everyone can fit into. And so you, the other side of that too, is for some people, they will choose to not have jujitsu as a part of their life. Yes. And that's reality, right? Like I, it used to hurt me personally. I'd have a student that quit or um, people that don't want to try it or for whatever reason. And, you know, for some people, it, it may not be the enjoyment that I find it to be. Yes, exactly. You know? And that's okay too. Yeah. 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 And so like for you, did you, did you start under John Jock Machado? Is that the, so you pretty much stuck with him from, from the whole time. Yeah. I um, moved away for a, a few years for a full-time teaching job. Um, and that was an amazing, great experience. And then I am now back at, you know, I came back like in 2004. I mean, I also got sick as well. So I had chronic EBV. So I had okay. like, fatigue and a bunch of stuff. And so I couldn't train for uh, uh, those years actually as well. Oh, so wow. I was kind of teaching um, during a lot of that time. And then I actually tried to um, combat and deal with the EBV. So it's Epstein-Barr virus. Yes. So if anyone has ever had mono as a kid, especially like you have the virus, and yes. um, what happened is, well, usually what happens is when you get mono, it's like you're tired for a yeah. few months yeah, and then you kind of get over it and that's it. Well, I never got over it. So I, I actually got it in 2007. So that's the year I did ADCC and I okay. accepted my husband three days after that. And then I competed um, with the Fila world grappling team in Turkey on the USA team. And then we did a CrossFit certification at the gym I was teaching at. And I never recovered after that certification. I'd never yeah, done. That's like a lot in a very short period. Well, of time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of emotional, physical, mental, all of these things. And it was kind of like the highest high and the lowest low of my life, you know? Yes. Yes. So it was kind of a crazy year. And um, after that CrossFit cert in October, I never felt okay. And so I went to the doctor and they did the tests and the doctor basically called me right before Thanksgiving and said, oh, you have Epstein-Barr virus. There's nothing we can do about it. Good luck with life. Have, have a great life. And, I mean, she was as kind as she could be. I, I, it wasn't her, her right? Yeah, she, yeah. Could do about it at the time. And so I did a lot of research. I tried to train it out of myself. That didn't work. Um, I tried changing my diet a million different ways. I tried so many different things and I couldn't get rid of it. And so in 2014, I had a private student and we were going to Hawaii. To, um, she wanted to compete at a tournament there. And I had decided that when I came back from Hawaii that I was going to quit the sport and walk away. I was going to quit my job teaching at the gym. I was going to find a new life doing something else. Okay. And I didn't know what that was, but I decided that after this trip that I was, because I, I, I felt like if I can't really train and I love rolling, then I don't want to be even teaching and half doing it. Yes. Um, because if I can't be out there doing all these things and new techniques and stuff and really doing the part that I love, then why well, kind of only be part way in? I know. So, so I decided to, to quit. Um, except that when I went to Hawaii, my friend, uh, a friend of mine in Hawaii that was living there, um, told me to try this red marine algae supplement and that would help. And within two days I started feeling better. Oh, wow. So that was in October of 2014. And so I came back and the next day went back to Jean Jacques and I said, Hey, I want to come back and train. And, you know, I don't feel great. I don't know how, at what capacity I can do it. And he said, just get on the mat. And I said, oh, yeah, by the way, I signed up for Master's Worlds in a week and a half. <laughs> and so 
mind you, before this, I'd never done master's divisions, right? Like, even though I was master's age, right? At this point, our sport has grown so much, which is really wonderful that there are all these different um, people categories. in the categories. Yeah. Yes. Um, but back then there was a master senior tournament. There was one and it was kind of a joke. Like we used to call it old man's world. <laughs> and so no one really did it. And it was in Brazil, I think at the time. So um, by 2014, that had started evolving. And granted, obviously from 2007, I was, I don't know, is that seven years older? So I was um, 46 at that time. And uh, so I signed up for the master's worlds and just as more of like kind of this mental challenge and there was no one in my division. And he's like, yeah, just get on the mat. And so that was Monday, I think. And then Wednesday I went back in. I was like, there's someone in my division. Should I drop out? And he looked at me like, I was <laughs> and he's like, just get on the mat, get on the mat and train. And so um, I trained like five times and then went and competed and um, won my one match. Nice. Yeah. So um, that for me was kind of a big step um, yes. in coming back to that. And not, I mean, my whole jujitsu career, now they call it career, like we didn't used to call it that. Yeah. Which is what we did. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, I, I never quite knew where I was going. You, you know, none of this existed. So like when I started jujitsu, there were no women at ADCC, right? Yeah. Um, there were no master division. Who knew that it was going to explode the way it has in our whole world, right? Yeah. So, um. I, I guess, you know, that's kind of how I've lived is I just kind of go toward the things that I love doing and I'm drawn to. And um, there aren't usually um, things that go, well, this is going to be really cool or this is going to pay off in some way. Um, but that's not the reason I did it in the first place. Right. So, um, I, yeah, I just do what I love doing and it's been an amazing crazy life and how long have you been training now would you say like from what you said that was back in 2000 so it's been yeah november of 2000 is when i signed up and so almost 22 so, years now yeah that's so awesome and so you were one of the first female black belts correct yeah yeah i'm number six outside of brazil wow that's really cool and so for you like i mean this is something that I always like, cause I, I have, we, you know, we have students that I have a women's program and stuff and, you know, um, all of us who train, you know, you all, you have your good days and your bad days, right. You know, you have your days where you were like the nail and you're just like, Oh my God, like, why, why am I even doing this? And then you have your days where you're like, yeah, you know, and <laughs> you've been doing this long enough that you could probably say that even now it's still that way. Correct. Like where, I mean, do you still, or how does that, does that evolve? I'm curious because I'm a purple yeah. belt now. So I want to know like, how does that, so I could like, you know, it's good to hear from someone who's been. So for me, um, I think, I think the attraction to the sport and the interest is in the struggle. Yes. And I, I had to say, like, I don't really love competition, but what I love is the grind, getting ready and the focus, getting yes. ready for competition. Yes. And I kind of like the uh, focus and intensity of that. Um, and so I think that sort of feeling, even starting jujitsu, you know, I basically felt like I was in a dark closet with no light, trying to yes. figure it out. And for some reason, I, I didn't keep questioning that. And I think when people try to think and cognitively understand everything, um, it gets in the way. Yes. Right? Your, your mind gets in your own way, you know, like you're, yep. you're, you're questioning, you're thinking, you're thinking. And granted, I mean, I do that plenty in life and somehow yes. in jiu -jitsu, um it, it didn't impede me in that way so um I, I i think the not knowing kind of helped feed that for me and then okay. when you have that little glimpse a little glimmer of light and you see it and then you're like oh my gosh 
and then boom, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah, it goes away. Yeah. right? And so then you go, wow, like I'm starting, you, you know, like. I don't know that you know that you're starting to understand, but you kind of feel like you're, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm sort of making sense of this. And then you have the days where, like you said, like you're the nail and they're like, I don't understand anything at all. I just got yep. smashed. Right. Yes. And so that, um, that ongoing thing, I mean, that's life as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so becoming more comfortable with that, I think is, is a key. And I, I think never, really feeling like you completely understand it. And so now it's obviously shifted a great deal where I feel like I understand most of it. Right. Yes. Um, as opposed to none of it. Yes. But that doesn't mean I understand it all at all. Right. So um, it's that same feeling, but in inverse. Right. Makes so sense. when I went back um to Jean Jacques and, you know, I'd learned so for so many years under him. So I'm pretty familiar with a lot of his style and his teaching. Right. And yes. And I remember going back and uh, this one guy was also a black belt was my partner and doing the technique. And I remember and to me, it was like this really basic technique that we had learned a million times. And he was like, oh, and, and it was like this new discovery to him, certain details. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, you don't know that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it flipped inside my brain. It was like, no, he's being the empty cup, the empty vessel. Like he is open to relearning and re-understanding. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't remember this detail or that detail. And so yes. then... I would be in class watching a technique and, you know, so I'd be like, oh, I know this, I know this move. And then I would sit like, okay, where's he going to go from here? Like I would try to, 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 to guess and whether it was Jean-Jacques or anyone else teaching, but then it became this challenge to myself to find a detail that I didn't already know. Yes. And, you know, like I've gone to seminars and stuff and, and I tell people like, if you find one little detail that changes, so now you, go from 90% to a 95% finishing or, or success on that move. Like, like that's everything that little yes. detail, right? So as we get better, as we progress and our, our, our learning is smaller and smaller details. Yes. And so his attitude really helped me shift mine to um, embrace learning in a different way. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, and, and, and that's one thing like for me is I, I, I remember when I first started, you know, you're always like hungry and like going for the move and you're just trying to flip through the library of everything you're learning. And then as you progress, you just kind of start to like pay more attention and just kind of trying to figure out, well, why do we do this? Yeah. Like, you know. Oh, yeah. And, and now now it's totally fun. Yeah. Um, so it took a long time to get to just having straight up fun when you're rolling. Yes. And <laughs> um, I don't know. There's just so many facets of training and learning and the interaction with your partners. Yes. And um, I, I think it's just like an ongoing journey and it just gets better and better. And so now I don't, and, and I, I think I wrote in my blog years ago, right? Like, white belt it's just like like you're totally lost and then as, as you progress like those ups and downs kind of become smaller yes right and in the same way i think when you're moving on the mat it becomes less techniques as opposed to movements yes or your movement and the connection of the techniques into movement yes and how your body understands it before your brain does. So back to what I was saying, like about your brain getting in the way, like even in learning a technique, you know, like it doesn't feel right. You know, I'd hear that from students all the time. It's like, well, you've never done this. So yeah. how do you know what right feels like? And yeah. it's like retraining your body. Like when white belts come in, they do the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do, right? Someone catches you an arm bar and you want to pull away. Well, you're just giving it to them, right? It's the opposite. Yes. And so it really is training like a, a little puppy dog, you know, yes, it's, it's yes. like you have to learn different responses and patterns 
um, to what's coming at you. Yes. And your body learns it before your brain understands it. This and trusting true. that. And we, you know, after any amount of time, I'm sure you've had the experience where all of a sudden your body's doing a move and then you're like, oh my gosh, I got that arm bar and I never even thought about it. It just yep. happened. Yep. So that's because your body already knows it. Exactly. And if you're thinking about it, it would be late. Like yep. anyone, whether they're a boxer or walking across the street or driving a car, by the time you think about responding, it's too late. And so it's that hours and hours of mat time and training and creating the automatic people. response. Yeah. Yes. And then getting in trouble, like doing the wrong thing. And then <laughs> after years and years of that, then, then you go, oh, I did the wrong thing, but it's fine. I can deal with this situation because I've been here too. So there's never, ever that time where you, you're freaking out because it's like you've been through every been here. Yep. little tiny permutation of it multiple Ex times. Exactly. But as we know, there's always new stuff, you know, there's always like a buggy choke or whatever, you know, like, I know I was watching ADCC this year. I was like, everybody's doing buggy chokes this year. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean, not once. I don't know if you've had it. It's annoying. Like it, when it's yeah. done to you, it's just so <laughs> annoying. Like, ah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's very interesting to, to watch and learn. And, and for me, like personally, I love it. I, I personally, I love when I have a bad day in jujitsu for me personally, because I'm like, okay, I obviously maybe try, made, took more risks, kind of like when skateboarding, right? You only fall take risks or I just made a lot of mistakes today and I'm not going to try to make those same mistakes tomorrow. Right. And just kind of, I view it like that, but I know some people, mainly the ones who leave, they have a hard time, you yeah. know, and I feel like for me personally training, I don't know about you, but I feel like the ego it's like you have to have an ego but you also don't at the same time yeah it's this weird balance of like having enough ego to want to be your best but also not having the ego to not get all like upset when you're not your best all the it's very <laughs> yeah it it is exactly what you said right it's like a little bit of a conundrum is that the right word yes uh, yes or, um it's hard to explain to people, right? And I think when you um, get frustrated or upset, I think, and, and I think most people, like, it depends. I see people that get mad at themselves. Actually, it's more, most people get upset with themselves, right? Like, yes, yes. Um, as opposed to the other person. Yes. Right? Um, but that like you were saying, whether it's competition and losing or getting, you know, wrecked in class yeah. that is, those are all just things that the, the reason you do get better and you improve is because of that frustration, right? Yes. Because you've hit a problem, like just like in life, it's like, you don't change or get better or do anything different if everything is okay. Exactly. So without, our training partners to give us headaches and problems and frustration. Yes. Then it gets difficult to improve yourself or exactly just fine. And, and I mean, I think there are definitely times where, you know, you have your own responsibility to, to figure out what you need to do to improve. But I think it's also a mindset or disposition that people have. And obviously those can change, right? Like some people will always, and it doesn't matter in what part of life or in jujitsu, you, you know, like they'll just be happy where they are. Yeah. And repeating the same thing. You know, we all know that guy that does the same move over and over. And it's like, dude, like everyone's defending that move now. So it's not going to work for you. Like, yeah. And, and that should be the thing that helps improve us. Right. Yes. But sometimes people don't, acknowledge those things or it takes a really long time you know everyone's learning is at a different speed yes and so you know those dead ends those things that frustrate us those things that give us problems those are the things that help us to move forward right? absolutely so um as painful as it is you know in life too it takes a long time i think sometimes it takes years to figure things out um, or to understand things. And oh, yes. In jujitsu, it's a little quicker. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I feel like at least when you do jujitsu, it makes life struggles a little bit less, uh, to me anyway, a little more able to handle, you know, cause it's, it's like life, you know, you get in these bad positions. You're like, Oh my God, what am I gonna do? I could freak out about it and then maybe get caught cause I'm freaking out or yeah. I can calm down, think about it, you know, see if I have an option. What do I have? What can I do? Right. And then go from there. Yeah. It's such an incredible metaphor. I think, um, kind of backwards from what I just said, I think I um, mentally understood, saw the metaphor of jujitsu in life before I really could implement or understand it more directly. I don't know if that sounds kind of weird, but um, but I, you know, like I, I guess anytime you're analyzing your life or jujitsu in that way, you know, like you're stepping back and kind of looking at it removed. And so then I think over the years it's become closer. Yes. To um, being and living it and un that understanding. Um, not that there isn't always more, but I guess that's come closer for me. Yes. And sometimes I'd be like, oh, it's just like life. Oh, it's just like jujitsu. And I'm like, no, duh. Like, like, why didn't I, why wasn't, why weren't those two things more? Uh, I don't know. It's like a weird, like, like you understood it, but you didn't actually feel it for, yeah, yeah. for a long, like a long time, probably. Yeah. In oh, different, sure. in different aspects. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, or yeah. or it's when you, you don't, again, so like, it, 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 like, okay, so now we're in um, inception or something like we're in, inside a conversation in a conversation. Because, <laughs> 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 because you don't like, it, it's just like, as a pro about and, and you teach classes and you and you're a coach yes. and like that so it, it, it's like I, I would have students or people that would come train with me and, and they were white belt blue belts whatever and it, and even now like i have friends that ask me for advice and it's like well i i can't give you the answers like i want to give them the answer i'm like just stop doing that because but i can't and i i i use the analogy of you know, maybe like a white belt is like a newborn baby and then a blue belt's like a two-year-old and a purple belt is like a eight-year-old. Yeah. And then a brown belt's like a 12-year-old. So I, I can't say to the blue belt, stop acting like a two-year-old. You need to be a 22-year-old. Yeah. And I can't, no matter what I say, I can give him all the answers. It won't make any sense to the two-year-old yes. because they're two years old. So they have yes. to live and have their experience, whether that's in life or on the mat and have the mat time the emotional ups and downs, all the things that go with a life, they have to have that experience. And so even if I give them all the answers, it's not going to make sense for them. They're not ready for it. Yes. And it's hard because they're friends of yours and they're students and they're adults, they're grown adults. And, and you don't want to sound condescending to them, but it's like, look, you're like a two-year-old. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, we're both grown-ups. But in jujitsu, you have to have your experience. And I have to respect that. Yes. And not try to tell you that there's no Santa Claus. Like you have to go through your experience. And I, and I realize I have to respect that and not try to give them the answer. Yes. And I don't mean to a technique. I mean, in a more broad way like, so like con conceptual yeah yeah i know um, what you mean because i oh am i am i blocking out a little bit yeah just for a second you're good yeah sometimes up here the internet will just randomly decide that it's mountain mountain internet so. <laughs> yeah and that's definitely something that i found you know now that i'm teaching you know, i have a women's program i got like 10 ladies and um just really cool but like they yeah, you see them, you know, doing the things and you look back and you want to just go in and correct them. But at the same time, you know that they have to figure, they have to kind of, yeah. you know, you can tell them, but they, they won't understand it until it's been done or they feel it. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, to me, I enjoy watching them go through their journey the way that I did. And it's really cool. And I'm still obviously going to be going through this journey for a very long time. And so it's, it's, um, I don't know. I think it's a very beautiful thing to see everyone's little growing from baby to right to as a baby jujitsu person and kind of making your way up the ranks. And I know that you also like recently, don't you do like a, like a, 
jewelry for jujitsu or something like that too. I thought I saw you did this like really cool. Yeah. I went through a phase. I mean, I haven't gone back to it. I have a lot of stuff made. Um, and I think at some point I have to, um, just start putting things up for sale. Um, so yeah, there were a few years where I had a studio and, uh, made jujitsu inspired themed jewelry. That's so cool. Things. So, um, right now everything's kind of in storage. Things kind of got a little crazy the last few years, but I yes. did some other jewelry that someone else made like this. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So that's, uh, Greta who was at one of, uh, she came to the women's camp and she's a blue belt and maybe she's purple by now. Um, but she, I, I, you know, I bought some of her jewelry and then I kind of was like, you know, I have these ideas I want, um, especially to wear when I work as an inspector for the athletic commission instead of a oh, job. Nice. And so yes. I made some drawings and she made them and then she made a whole collection and sold them on her site. And uh, actually like, like a portion, like she, it's really cool. She takes a portion and gives it to domestic violence charities. Oh, that's so, so cool. Yeah. Well, and so I started working with um, Great Transition. I started working with um, a, a nonprofit called Kimonos for Kai. And oh. um, James Wright is a friend of mine who's a black belt. And his son committed suicide when he was 12. And he started this foundation a few years ago. And Kai was like a big competitor in jujitsu. And so, you know, it's like focused on teen suicide, mental health awareness. And um, with a little bit of focus, I mean, just because of who's involved with jujitsu and MMA as sort of a jumping off point. Um, so I've been involved with that organization. So she gave a portion of this collection at that uh, for that to kimonos for kai which is really so cool. cool and so you know like it's just pretty amazing to be able to do jujitsu and use jujitsu yes. for all these other things you know for for good things yes like, and to help people which as i was saying before like you never know that these things are going to happen in your life or what things are going what meaning they're going to have and as you were saying, you know, like jujitsu, there's something that's selfish about it in some ways. And it's an individual sport, but you need other people. And it, it, that, that also reflects that, right? It's like, you're doing it for you, but you need all these people to train with you and to help you and to yes. bring you up in this yes. conflicted way. Right. Yes. Yes. So uh, it's just a really cool opportunity that, has come up that we get to use jujitsu as a platform for other things. So. Oh, absolutely. I've met some really amazing people in jujitsu that helped me or I helped them having nothing to do with jujitsu. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. it's the, the community that in jujitsu, that's the one thing that for me, I think was what has kept me, you know, so involved in jujitsu is the people I meet and learning about everyone's, stories and struggles that brought them to do this sport right yeah. um it's a really really beautiful thing and you get all different kinds of people all just doing this art you know and on the struggle bus together <laughs> is yeah. what i call it <laughs> but it's so cool because you like you were saying you, you meet so many different people from so many different walks of life that you would never in a million years ever meet Yes. or have a conversation with right yes. or it wouldn't be a positive pleasant thing it'd be kind of uh awkward or weird yes. um so yeah the community is pretty amazing you know i i was well i mean we came off being locked away for a couple years but you know i was at the trials and i was uh at a few other events and every once in a while you know the battles at competition get pretty intense yes. and there were a few moments in, in the last, you know, month or two of some things I've been to, I was, I, I got a little nervous. Like the battles were so intense. I was like, what's going to happen? What's going to be this next step? Like, like, are they going to fight? Right. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. are they going to be upset with each other? Yes. And you know, like every time it, it, it's like, they go from, trying to rip someone's leg off to hugging each other and having Good respect job, man. and you know and sometimes it's like if you don't know who they are it's like you don't always know what's going on you know and and yes. 
I, I've just seen that so many times and it's almost like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. You know, like yes. that it, it's all not, you know, yes, we're trying to basically kill each other with our bare hands or, you know, maim each other with our bare hands, but yet we have the respect for the other people. Yes. And that engagement, right? Because without, like I was saying, like without the other person, we wouldn't get to go to those places here and here, you know? Yes. And I think it's in the human biology to to combat, right? Or in some way, right? To fight. And we obviously are in a society in which we can't do that. I mean, let's be right. And so I think that people who train, we're letting a part of ourselves be expressed that as a human being is built into us but we don't really get to express that um, and, and it builds up. And so for the people that don't find a way to, and I feel like doing martial arts or some kind of physical, you know, especially against another human being, right? Like combating against another human being and like, yeah, trying to kill each other. Basically it's, there's something about that. You respect that you're both there doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're, yeah. do, we're, we're both here doing this, you know? And, and it's just a different mentality. It's a different type of mindset, in my opinion. Yeah. And I mean, and, and then even further than that, on on top of that, like you're trying to kill each other. <laughs> but then, <laughs> you know, you, you see the most aggressive, intense, crazy people come in. And then, the, like you're saying, that it starts to channel that energy. And as they progress, and then you see them taking this mentorship role yes. for other people and teaching them and passing on their information and knowledge and experience. And to see people develop, as you were saying, like that, it's it's amazing. It, it really is. It really is. I mean, for me personally, jujitsu changed who I was as a person entirely. Um, like how I reacted to things, just everything. I mean, I don't know if it does for everybody, but for me, it most definitely did. <laughs> I, I think it it does. And yeah. sometimes it's a really insidious long process. And I, I think uh, one of my stripe promotions, it was after I'd come back and I think it was a stripe I got after that. And it, um, there were just so many people there and it, 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 it's like, it, it's just something being a black belt, you know, that idea of that accomplishment or whatever that is, it's just something that becomes part of you. Yes. And so that idea, you know, where people like want to wear a black belt or be a black belt or whatever. And uh, I, I think it goes beyond that. I mean, we all know it goes beyond putting on a belt, right? And so I, I think with the majority of people, I think it does change who they are. Granted, that doesn't mean every black belt, you know, we used to think they were gods back in the day. That doesn't mean everyone is um, a great person, person, role model, whatever, you know, and, you know, there's like controversies and, and things yes. that aren't always great in the world. But you know what? That's that's our world. That's our, that's humanity, right? Yeah. So not everyone is perfect. Not everyone's a hundred percent. Not everyone's a good person and not everyone acts in a good way or what we would call a good way. Right. Yes. And so I, I think, you know, like some attention has to be drawn to your personal, I hate to use these catchphrases, you know, your personal power. Like, like, are you going to give that power over to someone else? Like, do you put someone up someone on such a platform that you don't trust your own judgment or trust your own intuition or trust what you know is right and wrong yes. or what you want to be involved with, like, and give that to someone else. Like you have personal responsibility as well, right? Yes. You can make your choices and we all do. Um, but I, I think because someone's good at jujitsu doesn't mean they're a great role model for yeah living or for who you are. That doesn't mean that you don't be friends with them. That doesn't yeah. mean that you necessarily shun them unless like they've done something wrong. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you can't, I mean, and that's not with jujitsu. That's with anything in life. Yeah. Right? Like, 
that's in anything. You don't, I don't know. So anyway, I mean, people do that with sports stars, with movie stars, with all this stuff. And then you start seeing, oh, well, and, and I, I guess that's part of how popular culture is built, right? Like we build up stars and then we take them down and we build yes. them up and take them down and we like to yes. come back and, 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 and then they're absolved of everything. I mean, we've seen it so many times, right? Yes. Well, yes. It's so and, true. And those are all great stories. I mean, and those are human stories. Yes. Yes. So you know, I, I think we all look up to people. We all have heroes, um, but we also have to um, keep that in context. Yes. Right? Yes, so. because everybody's human and everybody has their own experiences and you have no idea, yeah. you know. And everyone like, has their downfalls and weaknesses. Like no one is going to be 100%. So, yep. um, you know, whether that's a politician or a jujitsu master or a teacher, anyone, everyone has amazing things about them and not amazing things because we are all human, right? Yes, yes, so. absolutely. And so for you, you know, like coming from that moment of wanting to quit due to your health, you know, that was going on and then being able to come back, <laughs> how did that feel? You know, like, because I mean, <clears throat> I could only imagine if I thought, because I have rheumatoid arthritis, right? And so, like, I get days where it's bad, and I still train. It's hard, you know, and uh, but I, I still push through and stuff. And so, like, I could only imagine what it would be like to be in a place where you feel like this thing that I love so much, you know, I might not be able to do it anymore. But then suddenly having something happen that now yeah. I can. Was yeah. that, What was that like? How did that? <laughs> it, it's been amazing. And it... Um, made me so much more grateful for everything, but every time I get on the mat to yes. roll. So I was ready to walk away. I was kind of joking. I was about to sign the divorce papers and yeah. like, like one step away. And um, yeah, it, it was an amazing thing, you know? And I think during that time though, you know, I was focused on how do I get better at this or how do I, how do I meet this? So whether it was changing my diet a million ways, but really what it, I, I think one of the main things was um, letting go of a lot of control yes. and um letting go of a lot of stress and those go together, obviously. Right. Yeah. Um, yes. And changing, you know, if it comes down to changing your response to these things in life and sometimes removing things from your life is, is a big part of it as well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so changing your environment, changing people, changing jobs, changing whatever those things are, that are not feeding you in a positive way. And I'm not saying that anything is gonna be easy, but yeah. when they bring more negative things to you and it becomes internalized and then it, it's like, okay, so it's twofold. It's like kind of removing some things, but also, and, and that's taking responsibility, right? Like changing those things in your life, but also working on the inside out of how do I deal with these things that I can't change yes. because we can't change everything. Right. Yes, exactly. So I, you know, it's that serenity prayer, uh, yeah. you know, changing the yes. things that you can and then accepting the things you can't and then accepting being like, the how do I, to know the difference? Yeah. And then how do I not just accept it, but how do I respond to those things in a less unhealthy way? Whether yes. that's it's like, so I don't go. Yeah. I'm not, not like this and producing cortisol and all these things. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, maybe meditation, breathing, or maybe it's a bigger thing than that for you, depending. I mean, everyone has their stuff, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think I, I think that was a big part of it. And then all the other supporting things like diet. And I mean, obviously, jujitsu is the best, most fun exercise that you could possibly do. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> 
so that was that that part's easy um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um yeah so i i think that was a big part and then building on those things every day you know like you know try i, I used to try a lot of different supplements and herbs and and it's a step-by-step -step process. And I think I've slowly healed back a lot of stuff. There's still a few things that happen, but a lot of my symptoms have disappeared. Nice. And nice. it's, I think it's a combination of all those things. Yep. And I can feel when things are kind of building up and I can try to adjust them before I crash or anything happens. Um, you know, my fatigue crashes are different before they used to be like 30 in 30 minutes. I was like, just down down like completely drained need to be in bed and now it's like i don't even notice it except i start getting kind of cranky and kind of okay and and then yeah. and then it kind of goes like this and then it, it'll ease off like it actually just happened recently in a long time it hadn't happened and i didn't know until the next morning i was like i don't feel so good today and in 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 it i guess it's less um muscular physical now for me okay now it, it's more like mm, okay here. Yeah. And then yes. I can feel like, why am I not, why do I not want to go do this? Why do I not feel okay going to go do something I, that's on my schedule? And, and then I'm like, oh, I felt like this is why I've been weird for the last, you know, 12 hours. Yes. I'm like, oh, I think I just need to rest a little bit and recuperate a little bit. Cause I let that things kind of a little too out of control. That kind of sounds similar to like, I also have fibromyalgia, right? And so it sounds like kind of a lot of similar similarities uh, that are going on. Yeah. Um, so I totally get that, you know, having to like watch like what I'm eating, how much I'm resting, how much I'm stressed, because yeah. otherwise that uh, it's like a fine tuning, like every day trying to make sure everything's just right, <laughs> you know? And, for, yeah. And, and then, yeah. It's, you know, so I, I neglect one part and get some sort of, reminder symptom and I keep neglecting it and it keeps going. And then it's like, Poof, yep. You're, yep. You, you know, when something about me is like, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, and then <laughs> it's like, okay, I have to like deal with this aspect. Okay. Chill out on that. Yes. Let go of this, yes. Fix this, change that, adjust yep. this back, get back on track, you know? Yes. Yes. Having the, having the ability to, to, to self-reflect like that is very good. Though, well, right? yeah, because <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you feel Actually, it, you have no choice. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Nudges, it nudges and you ignore it, and then it, like, yeah, yep, yeah. No, that happened to me recently where I wasn't sleeping enough, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, what's happening? Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't wish any of these things on anybody, but I think, in, in, in a sense, like, I'm grateful to it because it has made me grateful for everything that I get in my life and that I do. And, you know, like a lot of the gratitude started a few years ago and um, I got sick, but then other people um, around my age got sick where the, like several people got cancer, different kinds of cancer, different severities. And, um, you know, I have a relative that got uh, glioblastoma like a few months before he was supposed to retire and then he passed before and all these little things that i would see um and still see right like we all live in the world and we have friends and and when people get sick like it's a reminder when i got sick it's a reminder it's like i get to choose and have input on what i do so i can live a better life for the next half of my life right i'm 54 yes. so yeah. i'm probably just past halfway Right. So I probably got sick around halfway and then it, it's like, okay, here's the warning sign. Here's the thing, like wake up. How, how do you want to live in? And, and it, it's like a midlife crisis, but it's like a very physical midlife crisis, right? Like we got sick or whatever because we were doing something that wasn't the healthiest. Yes. Right. Maybe it was yes. too many, you know, it's the full assault of everything. And so then how do we use that information? to improve the quality of our life for the next half. Exactly. And if we don't pay attention, then it's only going to get worse and worse and go downhill. Yep. And there's some, there's a lot of personal responsibility. Like we have our genetics, 
we have what we were given and then there's what we do. And that doesn't mean that you're going to prevent everything, but you can do your best to live a higher, better quality of life. Yes. Probably, right. So I think those things getting sick is something that made me pay attention sooner and that I wouldn't have paid attention to if I hadn't gotten sick. Yeah. And definitely for me being someone, you know, it's, it does make me very, I am very thankful every day I'm on the mats. You know what I mean? I, I think, man, there are some people who can't train Yeah, at all. Yeah. And, and to be able to train and to be able to come back and to be able to have it all and manage everything. I mean, it's like, like, look at, you're living it. You have babies, you have an academy, you're, you know, you, you get to train, you have all these things. And then it's like, how do we do that in a healthy in, way? Yeah. I was going to say balance. I'm like, yeah, balance isn't really a good word that I use uh, to describe myself. So <laughs> <laughs> but how do we, in a way that I'll, keeps us vibrant and alive. Yes. And in a healthy way, as you were saying, that we can do all those things and the way we, that is acceptable to us. Right? Yes. That yes. is enough for us to feed us. And I feel like for me, doing jujitsu forces me to do that, right? It forces me to take care of myself so I can train, if that makes sense. And so I feel like subconsciously for me, I mean, I've had these things since I was a kid, sadly, like, like teenager. And um, I think subconsciously I knew that doing jujitsu was going to be one of the best things for me because of that, you know, because it was going to force me to take care of myself yeah. so that I could continue to do this lifelong art, the sport that I was going to do until I can't anymore, you know, so. So you can roll forever. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's the goal, you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I know not everybody starts out and thinks that way. But for me, like that's, that was me from the first day I ever trained and got triangled like six times by my coach and then, you know, I had the adrenaline and I knew this is what I was going to be doing the rest of my life, you know, uh, that day I knew. And, and it's just one of those things where I think it's a beautiful thing, you know? <laughs> so it's really cool to like talk to people like you, you know, who, um, have been doing it for so long and still, still doing it and have had this crazy journey and still push through and still manage to keep getting back on the mats. You know, that's very um, respectable. You know, it's, a, it's very gritty. <laughs> Thanks. My mom thinks I'm crazy. She always looks at me like, are you done yet? Are you done yet? <laughs> oh, trust me. My family, same thing. They're like, why do you do this? I'm like, I can't explain it, but you know, yeah. I love it. <laughs> I, I mean, recently she was like, are you done yet? I'm like, no, like just imagine. She's like, why, why, why don't you stop? And I'm like, well, because if I stopped, then I would sit on the couch at home and watch TV and eat donuts and I would be unhealthy. And that would be way worse than having an injury right now. Well, and I mean, look at you, you're for your age, you do not look like you look fantastic too. So on top of that, you know, it's like, it keeps you healthy. It keeps you young, right? It, it does. It does. <laughs> so, that's so awesome. Well, I mean, this has been really great, like hearing all of this, like, what would your recommendation be to somebody who's maybe listening to this, wants to try jujitsu, but they're like a little nervous, you know, hesitant? Uh, what would you say? Um, go try it. You know, it depends where you, wherever you live, they're going to, hopefully there are a few academies and I, I would tell anyone, you know, go try every academy near you that you, you know, that you can make that distance, you know, like some people it's like, I don't want to drive an hour or whatever, but yeah, you know, like as far as you're willing to go, if there's like three or four academies near you, go try every single one of them. They all yes. should you go into a class and find your tribe find yes. you feel comfortable that doesn't mean that your instructor is going to be the great world champion because that may not be the right instructor for you yes that is a person who has a is a great world champion but if you're like 45 and you have fibromyalgia or you have whatever chronic fatigue and you've never been athletic in your life Maybe that competition school isn't the best fit for you because they won't understand. Yeah. So 
I, I think go and see how the place feels, see what the people feel like if they feel comfortable to you and if it makes sense. And, um, and, and not through uh, fear or intimidation or whatever else, like, like find where you feel the most comfortable. Yes. And, yes. Um, and go there. I, I definitely think that's great advice. I got very lucky, you know, my Me first too. place felt like a family. So I was very lucky, you know, <laughs> I hope well, everybody, I hope everyone finds that. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I'm super lucky too. I mean, I never knew anything about jujitsu or MMA or anything. And I walk in, you know, my friend brought me to Jean Jacques and um, just, I, I got lucky. I think the way he teaches, the way he approaches conceptually, like was very, um, akin to how I understand and learn. So um, that made things really good. But I understand though too, A, there's more options now and not everybody finds a good match on their first try. So yeah, yeah, this is true. This is true. And then um, is there anybody that you wanted to like maybe give a thanks to or anything for- uh, Of course we have to thank, we have to give a shout out uh, to, to Roll Forever. Role. Yes. Okay, so that's Betty's, um, company and she just recently got her black belt and she's in her sixties and she started Yay. in her fifties and awesome. um, she's super inspiring to, to people, but roll forever. It's not only the idea of rolling forever, but it's also athletes supporting athletes. So she sells gear and she um, is in Virginia. So she brings a lot of people out there to do seminars and stuff that wouldn't normally get access to those people. So she's had a lot of big names out there and she sw sponsors a lot of athletes as well. So That's really cool. Yeah. So um, I love them. I love uh, Greta and Hawk Couture.com. She has amazing jewelry kimonos for Kai. Um, I mentioned them earlier. Um, yes. Teen suicide and mental health awareness. Yes. Um, Roll Dogs, my uh, Kimono Gi sponsor, and Luta Gear, my uh, other sponsor, and um, the Cellular Performance Institute. Yes, Scotty. Mm -hmm. uh, my guys down there um, are awesome. If you uh, have injuries, they will take care of you. And uh, if you have any questions on that, anyone uh, just message me or call me. Um, and that's awesome because they are jujitsu fight people that are, uh, that own it. So they understand yes. what we're going through and they have all done the treatments and stuff as well, um, to repair their back. Like Scotty's had his back done and he had back surgery and, um, yeah, you know, he was he was telling me about it and then, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he told me Eddie just went and got a yeah, shoulder. Yeah, yeah, Eddie, yeah. 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 So yeah. that's so, so cool. oh my gosh, like that's, that's a whole nother thing, but that's an amazing thing that we have access to now. Um, and, and I'm, I'm going to be going to check out myself actually. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you do jujitsu, start your stem cell fund, you know, start, start saving your pennies. Um, because if you can avoid surgery, oh, yes. avoid it. Right. Yes. And, and Absolutely. Yeah. So I've had some great, great successful uh, experiences with stem. So uh, full supporter awesome. of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Who else did I leave out? Anyone? I was going, and then I'll, and then we'll like, sorry, I know. Like, <laughs> I think, I think it sounds like, yeah. I mean, and then um, also, you, since being under John Jacques, does that mean you know, like Brent and Matt and all of them too? Or you, cause, like Matt yeah. Baker, Matt Baker and like Brent Berniston. Yeah, yeah. They were, so they you know, were, all. Yeah, yeah. They were all, uh, they used to be with John Jack. Yeah. They That's all have awesome. Them academies yeah. now those are yeah i love all those people <laughs> so yeah all, I, yeah i came up with all those guys yeah that's so cool yeah. well thank you so much and you know hopefully maybe we can get you up here soon or something you know yes. and 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 have you check it out you know that would be awesome especially now that it's summer <laughs> i know oh yeah we're gonna have the grand opening probably in like june and so i'll let you know too and try and get some people up, up here yeah. and we could all have like a big jujitsu gathering and just hang out up here and yeah I, that would be awesome i think like a lot of people are kind of i mean i'm excited to like i said like in the last few couple months like going out to events and stuff yes again. yes and, um I, I think a lot of people are feeling that so more events, more things to do. And yeah, 
you know, especially <laughs> now. Road trip. The way, yeah, I know the weather's good now too. Yeah. So perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so very much thank for you. taking the time. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you everybody for tuning in and listening. Awesome. All right. Bye. Bye. Let me end it.